Hello friends and welcome to Fey Earth, a magical world set in an alternate 19th century Earth where every creature from folklore and fairy tale is real, have always been real and lived alongside humanity. Join our adventurers as they explore a world of arcane mysteries and danger, where the new scientific and industrial age collides with an ancient world of fairy and magic. When last we left our heroes, they'd been introduced to Bronwyn's new household staff. There were many people for Bronwyn to get to know, but the most intriguing to her was her new gardener, Megan Cleary. A startling surprise to Bronwyn, as she is also fate touched with Frost Giant heritage, and is in fact the first other Frost Giant fate touch Bronwyn has ever met. After a lovely evening meal, Selina and Olaf went for a walk in the grounds. Finding a large well, they spotted the ruins of an old cottage, but before they had a chance to explore it, the spectral form of a young woman appeared and attacked Olaf with a terrifying scream before it disappearing. Returning to the house and informing everyone of what they had seen, the party discussed plans for the next day to try and discover the identity of this lost soul before retiring for a good night's sleep in their new beds. Let us return now to find out if our heroes have discovered anything to help them rid their new home of this unwanted visitor. You're woken up. There is breakfast buffet laid out for you all. When you get down, Erin is there working. She's she's serving herself and um, Aigna Khan. So after breakfast, Eamon O. More that your household manager comes and says, um, my lady, if you wish, we can go through the estate now. Excellent. I would very much like to do so, that. I would like to go quite far So back. it leads you back into the this really, really fancy office. It's like it exudes masculine energy. Okay? That's okay. But it's, it's, it's really nice. Okay? Um... So he sets you down and he brings a ledger and he says, okay, so it's, this is an old ledger, but it's got, it's, it's up to date. And he says, so here you see, and he goes through it. And basically the gist of it is that there are 10 farming families who work land in the grounds and that is owned as part of the estate. Okay. Okay. All right. So each of the families, let me just, bum, bum, bum pays a rent to you um, and the combined income per year from the rent of the 10 families is 700 gold okay all right so... now he's also starts going through the household staff with you exactly because they need to yeah so it. he has the highest salary of course. on six gold per month perfect then after him um misney brethnock the housekeeper and the cook um cleaving burke they're on five each Four. Okay, and the two maids are on four gold per month, and the groundskeeper, the gardener, they're on five as well. Okay, cool. So what that the the combined annual wages for them is just under three hundred and fifty gold. Fine, yeah. A year, it's an estimated one hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty gold a year in household upkeep. Yep. Um, meaning that you're looking at between 200 to 230 a year net from the income so from the what I farms. understand from this, um, thank you, ordinary level leaving search maths, <laughs> um, is the estate kind of just pays for itself. There's a bit extra left over, but yeah, he, do, he, but he does, ex like he, does ex he does explain to you that the, the household staff is quite small. That um, large sections of the house are currently effectively. But if I'm if I'm employing more staff, that two hundred gold, like that'll that's kind of a bit of wriggle room for me to employ more staff if I need to. It would be, but it would then mean that you would have zero income for yourself from yeah. the estate. Okay, that's fine. Like, I'm gonna... and he's kind of looking at you funny when you say that. No, but I I don't know if you understand me, my lady, that you would not. The estate would not be a source of income for you. Yeah, no, that's that's okay. Um, Am I to take it that her um, her ladyship has other forms of income? Yes, yes. Oh, you, you excellent, excellent. Uh, we we are adventurers, which can be un you understand quite lucrative. So I have read such stories. Yes. Yes. Very good. Um, um, and he then points, he shows you around, he's like, so these oh, sorry, are... just going back, looking at these ledgers, how far do they go back? This ledger goes back probably about four years, no, probably about four or five years. Okay. But he does point, here are some of the 
other records for the estate. Perfect. And you can see there's a load of books and ledgers. Great. Could you point me to something maybe quite far back? Um, Are you looking for financial records? Are you looking for... Because this does include some journals and diaries from various bishops that lived in the estate. Perhaps some journals and diaries and then maybe financials as well. Um, we discovered um, a ruined cottage outside. Um, oh, I didn't near, know. Near a well. Oh, that would be St. Ulton's well. I've only been here a short period of time myself, but from what I understand, there is a well, St. Ulton's. Yes. Um, it's a holy well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the feast day for it is the 1st of September, I believe, which is quite soon. And locals will come to the area and they will take water. It's believed that the water from the well can help with i believe it toothaches. helps with toothaches and also i think aches of the hands and if you bathe your feet and it will help it's, it's like it's a minor restorative powers yes so um sorry folks just remind me how old did we did we reckon the cottage was 100 years 200 years 100 years hundred, yeah, hundreds of years yeah, yeah hundred, so, hun, hundreds of years 100 to 200 maybe more you're not sure oh okay right Bugger. okay uh you know like it's old and none of you are like engineers or stonemasons no, or anything. so we wouldn't have a clue if jack was here they'd be able to probably tell if you. jack was still here jack would be able to tell us exactly he'd probably be able to give us actually that. olaf give me an intellect roll because you are a dwarf that's yeah but jack would be totally jack able to tell be. us exactly of the you know the stone where and yeah. Well, I rolled a two, so I did not. Yeah, you don't know. You really were terrible in dwarven school. <laughs> you were that kid in school. You're, the tutors hated you. Yeah, 100%. I was always mission school. Yeah, so. Right. Having adventures, and look at me now. Right, so basically there's a big selection of stuff. Do you want to get the rest of the group? I do. So you get the rest of the group. Nafua is a scholar. Nafua, you're brought into the office and Bronwyn shows you several shelves worth of ledgers and journals, some of which look to be very old. So I'm hoping if we find, because there are journals of bishops, so if we find something in the, jur in, in the journal of a bishop who mentions this woman who is good and chaste, who lives at the well... Or maybe if she's paying rent, we could find her evidence of her in the financial records. Bron, I'm just gonna go to maybe Olaf because we're not really the scholars. You might want to come with me. We we could go to the village and ask the locals if they or if they know any stories. I don't want to leave Nifua to do it all on their own. Bron, no, you, you, you could help. help. You could help, Bronwyn. Ron is going to help Nifua because... And Erin yeah, yeah. pops her head in and her and Ignacon also help. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Then we'll go to the village and see if the, you know, yeah. people yeah. there know anything, heard anything, know of any ghost stories or whatever. So we'll do that. So, <sighs> right. all right. Uh, um, so is going to grab a massive stack. Oh, yeah. Um, like, you're... Floor, I get that Nifu is the scholar, but Bron still doesn't want to leave them. Oh, yeah. But I'd imagine, it's a lot. I'd imagine the food that you're probably very happy to sh sift through these old books. Oh, yeah. I'm taking notes as I go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, like, um, yeah, um, there is. It looks like there's at least two, three hundred years worth of of journals with some diaries um and um now the diaries they're not like really detailed personal diaries they look like they were diaries of the estate okay re <laughs> referencing only affairs of the estate itself it doesn't look well, like I think these somebody yeah. living on an estate who living at the estate at the well would still possibly be but my, yeah so my point is that it's not like these bishops from centuries back we're leaving their personal diaries with all Dear their dirt. diary felt cute today <laughs> yeah um, might delete later yeah. um so selena and olaf you pop into aaron's carriage 
to... Actually, yeah, I've just wanted to ask, did we pass the village on the way You did here? pass, you did pass through the village on the way. But then I just teleport. Oh, okay, you just teleport and appear in the middle of the main street. Oh, yep. Christ. Yeah, the locals. Absolutely, yeah. they, might, they better get used to it. <laughs> so you and Olaf apparate in the middle of this main street. There's a couple of people going about their business and they stop. They see you. Hi. And they run. Let's go to the, the next uh, inn, shall we? There's, we'll so so this, they got used to it for, uh, you know, sooner or later. This village is tiny. There's maybe about seven or eight structures on the entire main street. Most of them are houses. There is two businesses here. One is a tavern, and the name painted on it is Omel Mivna. And then there's okay. what looks to be a farrier's. They're the only okay. two businesses here. Everything else... Tavern. Yeah, so you get into yeah. the tavern. This is a really small tavern. Hello! <laughs> this is a very, very small tavern. Um, now, the owner has probably only opened it in the last, like, little, like... Probably the last ten minutes, you reckon? Because yeah. it's, like, it's about eleven o'clock. You had breakfast. You were walking around, or you were chatting with... Waiting for Bron to finish. Like, Bron was a good hour, hour and a half going yeah. through the finances with the household manager and then she took you in so you know it was a couple of hours after breakfast before he's even apparated to the yeah. village yeah. so yeah it's like mm, half 11 maybe a quarter to 12 and um so it hasn't been open that long there's nobody here is like it's open so that the in the innkeeper the tavern keeper the publican can clean up and you yeah. see this guy human mid 50s average height classic male pattern bald and this very round kind of chubby face blue eyes and a kind of gray hair on the sides um wearing like a dark brown tweed waistcoat um open collared shirt um sleeves um rolled up and he's just sweeping the floor this is a tiny tiny real um room um five people and it's full like well it could probably fit about like 10 people and it's right. you know like it's pretty small you know yeah. Um, there's like there's 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 two tables and each table has okay. two chairs. There's okay. a small fireplace with some banked up sods of turf that he hasn't bought it to light yet. And there's a bar with a couple of um couple of barrels of stout and then there's like three bottles no, there's two bottles of whiskey behind him and he's out in the middle sweeping the floor. As he looks up and sees your boat, and he's just like, oh, 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 oh. Good morning. Hello, good morning. <laughs> oh. And he's looking between the two of you, the banshee-blooded fey touched and the dwarf. And it's like, that, uh, um, uh, uh, um. We're from up the house. Do you know there is a new lady that took residence up in the house? Oh! You're probably aware of. Oh, yeah, we heard we're the... Friends. We're friends with her, so um, we're she... probably going to be staying there a quite while, so uh... we wanted to come and say hello. Um, <sighs> we're a bit unusual, but we just wanted to, you know, there's nothing to be, you know... Is, 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 the, is, is the new lady... It's the lady of the house, is it? I didn't know it was a lady yes. of the house. Okay, so yes. she's not a bishop, yes. is she? A what? A bishop. She's the she's the champion of Tara. What's that? She's a warrior. She wait. She's a warrior. Yeah, she's a warrior. Selena. Queen. He's looking really confused. He's looking really confused. You can tell this is she, a guy. See herself, myself. Um, um, our good friend here and some other friends we've been we've been kind of adventuring around um, these parts for a while and um, we, you know we've been uh, performing some services for the crown and our friend there especially and um, she's been rewarded with the uh, with the estate so she's taking up residence there now and we just wanted to come and um, well, say hello, and also to just make you aware that yeah, maybe you know, I mean, we are a little bit, you know, um, unusual, unusual. Maybe, yeah, yeah. So just so you get you, you get to know us, and you know, 
What did she do for the queen that she got the big house? Did she kill a dragon or something? Close. Uh, close yeah, enough. Yeah. yeah, we did. We actually did kill a dragon, but we did that all, all together. And we you, didn't kill uh, a dragon. You killed a dragon. Well, it was a water snake, actually. It wasn't a dragon, but have. like close enough. Right. My name is Tomas. Oh, Mel Mevna. Selena. Very nice to meet you, and, and this is Olaf. Very nice. Yeah, I guess. Very, very nice to meet you. Ne never met a Faye before. He says to Olaf. Because, like, this is the thing. Olaf, being a dwarf, true Faye, you know, you're, you've got, you're used to this reaction, especially in tiny rural areas where they're like, there might be some fairies on a bog or something that everybody stays away from, but, like, they don't get to talk yeah. to Faye that often, you know? Even, even Faye touch can be kind of unusual. So, yeah. Um, so... Oh, okay. Well, I'm I'm not much of a scholar, and I'm gonna be honest with you, master. No, but like you, you've been. Did you grow up here? Oh yeah, my family goes back many generations. But say there you go. You're sure you must have heard lots of stories around the, of the area because um, um, we've been. We haven't actually been in this area of the country that much. So uh, uh, see myself, my 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 family. We've been more traveling down the south, and we've been in Cork and Dublin. But this is this is fairly new to us, so we would like to learn as much as we can ourselves. Okay. Um, he, he's gotten the bottle of whiskey from behind the bar and he's gotten three glasses and poured each of you about, you know, about three, two, three drams. You know, it's not crazy generous, but it's not stingy either. And he goes, right, uh, slancha and um, clinks glasses and waits to see if he's going to drink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, not down it. It's, this is lovely. It's not, the Very nice. it's not the worst whiskey you've had, but it's not amazing. No, it's very it's middle shelf. The guy. Um, and like so, um, this is a tiny place, but I suppose that it grew because of the house. Am I correct, or is it the other way around? I I don't know. Mm. I'm not a scholar. I'm a yeah, pope. but like your family, have they always that uh, a family business? You yeah. Have here with yeah. Tavern, yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I inherited the farm. I inherited from your father. Who inherited it from his father? Who inherited it from his father? The old, That's wonderful. They, the wonderful. old Mel have always run this establishment. How wonderful! There you go. Um, so, would there a lot of people would have been working in the big house? Would they around from the from the area? Well, or are you I mean, like yourself? there's the the house owns a lot of the land around here, and there's farming mm -hmm. families that live on that land, and they'd pay a rent to the house. The house itself. In its heyday, I think there might have been a, oh, maybe over 20 staff live working there when it was, like, not recently, but some of the bishops, they liked their party, so they would have had a lot of staff. But in the last few years, it had gotten pretty small. Like, the bishop, before he sold it, um, he only, he had, like, I think, about 10 staff working okay. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There must well, we have been see, we see. Quite, quite a number, because we found some ruined cottages on the land. They're very close oh. to the house, so he must have employed quite, quite a number of people. I don't know anything about ruined cottages. I think most of the staff just stayed in servant quarters in the bottom of the thing, like, you know, in the basement area, I think. I don't know. Like, but, um, sure. yeah, so, um, I guess, but I don't know anything about any ruined cottages, though. Do, do you know of yeah. the uh, St. Alton, um, Oh, the well. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows yeah. about the well. Sure. Actually, the feast day is coming up soon. The 1st of September. We all go and we get the water. It helps with things like toothaches and foot aches and stuff like that. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. How wonderful. So, yeah. so but there's no story. How do you know any stories about the well? How long has it been here? Like, forever. I suppose you're forever. Yeah. No, like I say, they, they, um, they say that St. Ulton led an army to defeat the last of the druids to drive the pagan gods from Ireland at the time of St. Patrick. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, wow. How interesting. See, we didn't know that. See, but that's a, this is, this is yep. a yep. joke. Now, this was before the Vikings came with their pagan gods. Right. Oh, yes. 
yes, yes, to to north, yes, yes. You know, speaking of the history of the place, we were speaking to one of the maids who told us uh, an interesting tale about a woman who used to mind the well. Um, I wonder if that was someone from the village a long time ago. Oh, well, doesn't, I don't think anybody's minded the well in, oh, in quite a long time. Don't know what in about, oh... I don't know anything about anybody minding, like not not since I, not I've never known of anybody to be minding yeah. the well. Um, it seems like an old tradition. Yeah, and in fact, the like, if people are going to mass, they have to go to Navin because that's the nearest church, and the priests in Navin don't like the well. They say it's pagan practices, but sure, if it's oh, pagan, really? But how could it be pagan practices when it's after a saint? It makes no sense to me now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. But um, yeah, yeah. So, um, but then again, I don't really go into the grounds that much because they say it's haunted. Oh, do you, oh, really? So, oh, yeah. Well, we do what, what, like a ghost story, don't we, Selena? We do, we do. Please, oh, would you? Would, what, what kind of stories are are so, going around? As soon as Olaf says we do love a good ghost story, he pours you all a fresh round of whiskey. <laughs> so this Excellent. this story goes. That there was a young lass, I think her name was Grania something. I don't remember the surname, but it was Grania something. Now this is going back a couple of hundred years now, or so the story goes. And um, I think she might have been a nun, I'm not sure. But she was living on the grounds and she was looking after the well. But nobody looks after it anymore, like you were asking me. Nobody's done that in a long time. But a few hundred years back there was this nun... Who was looking after the well. Grania as I said her name was. So they say that. She fell in love. With an elven prince. And they were to be married. Right. But. She died. Oh my god. She died. They said some bandits had broken into the grounds of the big house. To steal from the bishop. And she came upon them that night. As she was out with the well. Waiting for her beloved elven prince. And she was killed by the bandits. But the elven prince he was off travelling. And so the story goes. That by the time he came back. She would already been buried. And he didn't know where she was. My God. That's what the story says. She's haunting the place now, is she? They say if her elf would come back and tell her he loved her, her soul could pass on. Wow. Sandwich. Oh my goodness. Wow. Of what a story. Yep. Oh. And as you say that, you can see he, he's he got this really kind of proud look on his face as a publican having wow. recounted the local legend to the new folk. And he's really yeah, proud. Yeah, yeah. He's done a good job telling the story. This is amazing. So, but you go to the well on the feast day oh, but, during yeah, but, but, the day. So yeah, during, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, at night, you oh, say oh, yeah, no, the place no, is haunted, yeah? No one goes onto the grounds at night. Even the bishop, the last bishop, that we think was one of the reasons he sold it was because of the ghost. Oh, really? Oh, That's what I heard, yeah. And apparently, the ghost only hates men. Wow. Because it was a man that hurt her. Wow. Yeah. Well, we'll have to tell Lady Pritchard this We will. Oh, is that yeah. what her ladyship's name is? Lady Pritchard. Well, I hope she comes and visits us all soon. Oh, what? yeah, we will. We will, we now, will now, tell her so, to come and, and, and say hello. Absolutely. And he kind yeah, of, know. he gestures to you both to come in close to him as if like to whisper a secret. And he says, now... What's she like? Some of the farmers are worried. Is she going to be up on the rent? No, no, I don't think so. No, not at all. Because um, you know what these uh, highborns are like. No, but she's not, you see. She's not. She's, she's she, like us. She's like no, a normal she, you, person who's she's just not, got this he, as, a, you just said she's as a, a reward for, for services rendered to but the that's, crowd. So, uh, but, but that's not it. at all. That's what the rich do. They reward each other all the time. No, but she grew up. She she grew. She's from a tiny little fishing village in Wales. 
Give me a persuasion roll. Because <laughs> he's okay. not... Yeah, you're going to give me a persuasion roll here. 19 plus 6. Oh, you and your feckin' charm. <laughs> All right. 25, yeah? 20 feckin' 5. You yeah. and that stupid circlet of Maeve. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I did give it to you. But anyway, uh, wait. Her ladyship was originally from a fishing village. Yeah, she's only recently been made a, a, a lady and she is between us, right? And I me lean in even more as if, like, oh, I'm telling you a big secret. Selena, uh, I'm gonna kill you! She hates it. She's like, she is so not used to it, right? right. So yesterday yeah. when we arrived right. and all the staff was there and she, okay. she doesn't know what to right. do, do, you know what I mean? She's like, oh my god, um, uh -huh. um, I'm from a tiny little fishing village. What do you mean? I, 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 ladies maid and all that. Oh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. And plus, we are, we are adventurers. I, I presume we will be, you know, keeping doing that. We have um, quite a substantial amount of money ourselves. So I don't think she will up the rent at all. You know what I mean? What she will do is try to help the farmers as much as 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 you can. You know, but um, otherwise. We'll probably leave it alone and and he's you know, really like, i don't think she's interested in in raising the rents and all so you don't have to be worried at all when he said when you say that you've done a really good job of convincing him and he's like he's really like he's kind of shocked in disbelief that the new lady of the big house is this like girl who was from this fishing village who's now a lady and owns all the land but she's also like he's really feeling so at ease. he's like he's really happy to hear that no she's this like commoner you like one of the people oh, yeah. and yeah he's like yeah, you've, yeah. you've done a great you've done with especially with that 26 persuasion role a fantastic job of convincing him oh god we're so, we're she, actually the thing there. is like you know many people might think she's an upstart but that's like mm -hmm. more than nobility i'd say who, who might think that although all of them are all the ones we've met so far i mean they're aware what what mm -hmm. she's done so i don't think anyone will begrudge her uh -huh. that but still do you know what i mean it'll be it's a bit of an awkward situation but i so i i hope the more normal and you know mm, mm -hmm. you you'll treat her the better because she's she really isn't used to any sort of like you know, treatment right. in sort of special treatment at all. So, um, 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 oh, oh, well, we're talking here. Um, are there many fae in the area? Do you have any, any, any fairies, any, any brownies or anything around? There's, um, I don't know about brownies. There's some fairies yeah. that live in the forest there, the woods okay. that touch on the fa Um, then there's some tree gnomes in there as well. There's the bog yes. that's about three, four kilometers west of here. And that's oh. got some Willow the Wisp, and there's supposed to be a puka on oh, the yeah. bog as well. But um, yeah. you keep keeping out of that. I I I, I hope. Well, I mean, obviously they'll um, they'll let you they'll let you stray. Well, I mean, obviously people go and they cut their turf, you know, for their fuel. Yeah. But people don't be yeah. wandering the bog at night. Now, there's the there's the wooden road that cuts through the bog, but nobody travels right. that during the night time. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Very good. Very good. Have you have you got any sort of they touched in the village at all or in the area i think we met the gardener who's working there a local girl some giant blood in her i think there is well they're not local local but i think there is a there is a family that lives like about two villages over and i think one of them has giant blood in them yep yep right right they, because you see um um, um bronwyn pritchard that's uh, the new ladyship's name she has giant blood in her as well oh so, i see yeah so she's a giant no she has giant heritage but she's quite you know tall like a giant she's a very formidable have, warrior you'll have serious gossip for the rest of the village now this evening oh, so yeah. Yeah. um you spent so you have a grand old time chanting to this guy let's get back to the great house okay so <laughs> nafu you're um doing your research you stuff so you've got a couple of choices here, okay? You can give me some intellect-based roles and some awareness-based roles to see how good you are at finding information in these tomes, okay? Can we, like, um, I was going to say, you're going to get an additional... Skill. So you have your research skill, so that's going to be an additional plus one, and you get an additional plus one from Aaron and from Ignacon. So that's going to be an additional plus three on whichever role you use. Okay, so I'm going to use my intellect, but I'm also going to use 
Um, could I possibly use memory to, because I'm going to probably speed read through a lot of it? Yeah, well, what we can, what we'll say is that how your memory, well, if you want to explain to me how you think your memory talent would help you with this. Okay, so how I think my memory talent would help me, especially from speed reading, if I start to see link, so if I start to see like old patterns, words, and yeah. then from one book to another, I'm going to be able to refer back to that book, read over what I saw, and then let it lead me to the answer I'm looking for. Perfect, absolutely perfect. That's wonderful. So that's going to be what your intellect and then your plus your intellect of three and your plus two modifier for your memory talent, and then the additional plus three from your aid from. Bronwyn, Aaron, and Aigna Khan, that's going to be a plus eight to the roll. Yeah. 20, so 28. 28. 28. Mm-hmm. Jesus, all right. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, um, you know, it does take you a couple of hours, probably about two, two and a half hours, but you are like... It's quite breathtaking to see the fool work. It reminds you of your old friend Finn, who a similar scholar. It's like she is just now. She does need some help because this is all written in Irish, and while your spoken Irish is getting pretty good, you're still not used to these um, European Latin alphabet. All right, so you do need a bit of help with that, and that's part of what slows you down. But between Bron, Aaron, and Ignacon helping you with the with the written bit of it. You do get through it all, okay? And you do find um, references that there was... It do, you know, it takes a while, but it does appear that there was a, there was a, a young girl. Her name was Grania Nifergal, um, who lived on the estate in 1612. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's 200 years. Okay. Yeah. And she had gained permission from the bishop of the time... Funnily enough, you can't find the name of the bishop. It's this usually, you know, this thing where, like, people writing something, assuming everybody knows what they're talking about, they'll leave out relevant pieces of information. So they just keep referring to them as the bishop. Because, well, everybody knows which bishop we're talking about, you know? That kind of a annoying thing you get with old texts. But the bishop at the time let her um, move there... There was a small cabin that had belonged to a groundskeeper or something, but they died and nobody replaced them. And the, the, the new groundskeeper had gotten a bigger cabin or something. She, you're not entirely sure what. But she'd asked if she could move there just kind of the, for peace and solitude, and they'd let her. Um, it seems that the bishop initially thought that she was hoping to take um, vows and become a nun, but that wasn't it at all. She just genuinely liked the peace and solitude. Um, there's not a lot of information about her, other than that she seemed to be very good and a very pure woman, um, who had no real interest in forming relationships with any of the men who would have approached her, because she was a young woman in her 20s, she would have been of a marriageable age, um, um, and just says that she was wonderful at maintaining the well, she had a deep connection to it, um, and that people, the locals, were very happy with her there to look after the well, but it does make reference that there was a terrible tragedy that some brigands had had entered into the grounds with a plan of breaking into the house and she was out that night and came upon them and they did attack and kill her. And she was, she got, and she was buried, she got a Christian burial in the local graveyard and that's the only reference that you get to her. Um, could I tap into that memory ability to find out what bishop that was? Well, this is the problem. So this, so as I said, the pro this is the problem is that they don't, it's one of these annoying things where they don't actually name the bishop. This was the bishop themselves writing a lot of this. They don't name themselves in their, in their notes. And, okay. and, and you know, and it's just, re the references are to the bishop be in that annoying way of, well, everybody knows who we're, who, who we're talking about, so why would we mention it? Which is a problem with older manuscripts where there is an assumption of common knowledge. So there, the bishop frustratingly isn't named. Now, you could probably find out if you went into yeah. church records, but you would have to probably go to Dublin 
or a larger Dublin would be the best place to go to find those kind of clerical records it's not that you couldn't find them but you're not going to find them here like you might be able to go back and see if you can find um, a list of ledgers of bishops and then eventually you'll be able to work it out it's something you could probably do to, uh, over the next few hours if you wanted to looking through the previous um, bishops who had resided there you should eventually be able to work out who was living there at that time that won't be a major problem um, but you'd actually just finish finding all this information out when Selena and Olaf come back um, from their foray because I'm assuming Selena that after you finish in the tavern you just teleport right back into the house yeah we might go and talk to the other guy in the uh, uh the farrier the is guide is too, or, or I, I suppose no I suppose the tower, Le, yeah like the only we'll yeah. spread the information yeah. or the gossip so that's it yeah the, we'll, we'll the only other the only other um business there is a farrier and you and, and the tavern keeper Tomas he explains to you that basically the village it's barely even a village there's about uh, there's yeah. like eight houses there's eight structures one of them yeah, is his yeah. tavern then there's his house there's the there's the farrier's workshop and his house and then the other four houses are families um for whom the the men of the families work as farmhands for some of the local farmers that's the entirety of this village you know like if we were in england you would be referring to it as a hamlet that's how tiny this is you know doesn't eat doesn't even have a church yeah all right so you have um, the Phil, you've just finished your research and explained your discovery when you hear the sound of footsteps and Olaf and Selena chatting away as they walk into the study. Hello, everybody. We had just had a very interesting chat. How was the village? Uh, in the local tavern, and I'll explain what your man has said. Mm hmm. And okay. what I also say to Bronwyn, they're, they're the, apparently the, you should talk to your farmers because they seem very worried that you're going to up the rent. And oh, I'm not. Yeah, they don't the know rent. what, you know, they're all worried that some 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 highborn person is going to come here. And oh, so, um, yeah, you should you should really go and talk to them. But yeah, I'll explain what your man Tomas has told us uh, okay. about the story of the haunted grounds and um, I also mentioned that they think that's the reason why the bishop actually sold the place in the first okay. place, you know. And that she goes after men. And that she, yeah. according to the local story, she was in love with an elven prince. Yeah. Okay, well, but we know. You do know from her journal, it wasn't a prince, it was a fairy. It was a fae, yeah. but he wasn't an elf and he wasn't a prince, he was a fairy. Okay. Which, you know, fairies are... Well, how stories work. Yeah, but you know yourselves. Like, fairies are only about 20 to th maybe 30 centimeters in height. Normally, they're quite tiny. Yeah. Um, And from the journal, it would seem that they genuinely loved each other. But she was somebody who just did not desire physical relationships. And that would have been anatomically very difficult with a fairy yeah and he had no desire for a physical relationship with her he just but he did love her they yeah. genuinely loved each other but and that was but of course as selena says yeah the locals say it was an elven prince it wasn't an elven prince it well, was sure, a fairy they're just gonna see all of that as an elven, as elven but, but see that's it let's see, you know i mean you know yourself how the story so yeah. after, after a while they get like but nefil and so Nefua, you hearing this this is kind of like okay this is possibly fitting in time scale wise with what you learned so how are we going to deal with this then because well, we check out the woods on your land Bronwyn because the, the tavern owner suggested there may be fairies in there oh yeah maybe the fairy who loved her is still there uh, well Olaf you would know that um um, fairies, like they're quite long lived, similar lifespans to a dwarf. So they're depending on how old this fairy was when he met this young woman, Grania. There is a distinct possibility he could still be alive. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. So will we go? Maybe will we go to the forest? 
in yeah. the day. I'll bring, I'll bring some tobacco. I'll bring the chest with the tobacco with me. Yeah. Whiskey might be a better offering than tobacco for fairies. Yeah, let's let's bring some whiskey yeah, it's, as well. It's, it's not a kayak. It's a, they're, they're fairies, so... Yeah, maybe old Beth would have liked some tobacco, Olaf, but you never offered her any. Oh, no, we don't have any whiskey here, do we? No, you oh, you well. could go back to the tavern and buy some. Yeah, but that wasn't really that, wasn't really that great. Um, you, you have the teleport spell. You are just under yeah, 50 just kilometers from Dublin. Dublin. You I can literally, nice. yeah, for like six it's mana... You can and just bamf to feckin' Dublin. I know, it's only 30 miles, I already figured it out. Yeah, so, um, it's like, yeah, as I said, it's like just under, it's like 47 point something kilometers from Ardbracken yeah, House so, to Dublin. Uh, so, yeah. It's like, hang on a second, and I'll just go, <laughs> and I'll go to, Goddamn to, spell. <laughs> oh, do you know what I'll do? I'll go to the pub where we had the two benders. Because well, no, but this is the thing. Selena, you could go to like a really fancy like wine dealership that does spirits. You don't need to go Even to a better, pub. That's exactly yeah. what I'll do. That's where, that's where we get our, our own, or that's where I can buy my own shit. How, so much, that's what do. how much do you want to spend? Five gold. Okay, for five gold, you're getting like some of the finest whiskey in this part yeah. of Europe, okay? Yeah. Can okay. I get a barrel? Not for no, they physically wouldn't have a barrel. Okay, so the biggest amount that I can get You could get you could get a bottle for like you could probably for five gold you could probably get two bottles of ridiculously ex like we're talking the equivalent of like hundred euro plus bottles of whiskey. Fantastic. You know? We're talking Fantastic. the the limited edition twelve year old. Oh, we're talking twenty year old single malt. Okay? <laughs> That's what we're talking here. Barrel, they wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. So we're talking the the, the equivalent of a, of a twenty plus year old single malt that you're not going to see change of a hundred euro for. Bloody tough. So two, yeah, two, 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 two minutes. Yeah. And, I'll pop back. and uh, Selena reapparates in the room holding two very expensive looking bottles of whiskey. Actually, here's my housewarming gift to you, Lee, my lady. Okay, she hands you one of the two very expensive looking bottles of whiskey. Oh, thank you. I'm sure you for this. I feel like I should give you... Wait. No, it's fine. It's fine. Honestly, as I just, said, my house warming. Just gift. remember to deduct your five gold from your millions of gold that you have, okay? Yes. So, yes. Also, um, are, we, are we all staying here now? So from that point of view, like, do you know what I mean? Maybe we should pay rent for you what, what what's gonna happen to our oh, no, house so. i don't i don't want you to pay rent it like i i i get rent from farmers so like hmm. we're fine for rent on this place and paying the staff so, uh, so so there you go so it's a gift from me <sighs> right so, nice whiskey. so Selena has some very fine whiskey to offer the fairies. Um, you, you will be going there probably this evening to see them if you can. You know yourselves, it's difficult to find the fae in the middle of the daytime, but at nighttime it's much easier. Party hoping to track down the hopefully still alive former fae love of this tortured Fergus. soul. Will our heroes find the fairy that was once in love with this long dead woman? Can they help her soul find rest? Will the party ever stop teasing poor Bronwyn over her new title? Tune in next week to find out.